If I can do it, so can you. This week's experiment is building a business. And instead of being a student, I'm one of the teachers. We're here in my hometown, San Francisco, kingdom of the startups, to help a beginner get up and running. The other teacher, my partner in crime, is Noah Kagan. Good friend, I've known him for years. He is the founder and chief sumo of AppSumo.com, a free newsletter for entrepreneurs or wantrepreneurs who want to become entrepreneurs. Hey, what's up, bro? <laughs> Good to see you. Do you want to get some coffee? Yeah, get some caffeine. The student Noah and I will be working with is Cindy Manet, a freelance yoga instructor who supplements her income by doing odd jobs. Now she wants to be her own boss and focus solely on yoga. Do you do much yoga yourself? I was doing it a lot. Like, I went to India and did yoga for a month. Oh, you did? Yeah. So I'm outmatched. I'm outgunned here. Uh, yeah, yes. pretty much. <laughs> You'll actually be able to evaluate. You'll be, have something to See compare this yeah. against. Noah is highly analytical, asks very good questions. He has tracked hundreds, thousands of entrepreneurs as they try to do what she's going to do this week. All right, off we go. Right out of the gate, I wanted to team up with Noah and go take one of Cindy's classes. Me too. Yeah, wanted to experience it firsthand, no context, no backstory, no explanation, to see what the product is. Inhale, come halfway up, hold that breath. Now, lift and twist to your right, exhale. Now, your next inhale, open the eyes, and it's going to come to your first downward facing dog. The class was solid, but it was also a lot like every other yoga class that I have been to. And I suspect there's more under the surface that Cindy has to offer, and we're gonna have to figure out what that is. So how do you guys choose what to do exercise or health-wise? I'm like a program type of person, actually. I definitely need like a very clear endpoint. As soon as the class ended, Noah pounced on these other students and it turned into an impromptu focus group. So what I'm trying to explore with Cindy is, you know, what kind of yoga can make her be differentiated so that others would want to come week after week. But I want to explore some of the things that people really started to resonate with. She throws in music into her yoga classes. I've been to numerous times. One time I had a 70s disco yoga oh, night. Oh, that was a blast. Donna <laughs> Summers, Michael Jackson. What was a blast about that? How often do you hear uh, 70s music? And, and when you're doing yoga. Right. We're actually able to unearth trails we can follow to really figure out how she can differentiate herself and make this thing hopefully take off. Becoming an entrepreneur, I mean, it's not the easiest road, right? It's tough. Like, how and when did you decide to actually try to make yoga into a business? You know, I was teaching like three, four times a week, but I wanted to also just create my own thing. I saw a lot of people in San Francisco who had like fitness business, boot camps, things like that. I'm like, well, if they're doing it, I could do it too. I just didn't know what it would be. Cindy, I don't think, has a very clear goal. We have to help her get extreme clarity, crystal clarity. In my book, The 4-Hour Workweek, I outline a framework for creating and growing a business using the acronym DEAL, D-E-A-L, which stands for definition, elimination, automation, and liberation. Liberation is the ultimate goal. It's a life of mobility and choice. But the first step towards liberation is definition. That means quantifying your goals and overcoming any fears that could keep you from just getting started. What you have been doing hasn't been working, so you have to try to say, all right, well, what is something new, a new way I can approach it? There's a lot of parties that involve alcohol. But what if there's parties that are catered around fitness and health and smoothies and juicing and all of that, you know? And so you're excited about it, and you're like, you're convincing me. I'm like, yo, Tim, that's <laughs> <laughs> I want to get my green smoothie on. What happened, though? It's like, oh, how do, I, how do I do that? I mean, what was the worst thing that could have happened if you actually went for it? I guess the worst thing would be just no one shows up. As a thought, it might be interesting to have her right now try a coffee challenge. A what? The, the coffee challenge is where you go up to some random person, the guy in there, they don't know about it, and you ask for 10% off. She's very timid. She can be extremely timid and shy. Why would I ask for a discount on coffee? We have to train her to get to the point where she can walk through those irrational fears, and you start with silly things. Have you had people ask for discounts on your classes? Uh, um, I, I guess I could do it. I think it. that means she should do it, yeah. yeah. It's all I'm yours. Kind of, I'm kind of nervous. Okay. Yeah, 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 this is great. Don't make me nervous. <laughs> yeah, knock him dead. You'll do great. All right. Fear is a really interesting animal. 
It's something that we all face in different ways. Can I get one mate with 10% off on there? You have to inoculate yourself. Would that be okay? Against the fear of rejection, uncomfortable conversations, asking for things you think you might not deserve, but really need. Yeah, well, it's like I've done it. Mundane, yeah. yeah. Hey. Hey. So. Thank you. What happened? He's like, yeah, sure. What's the special occasion? <laughs> I'm like, okay. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. You can really train for the big stuff that you're afraid of by practicing with the really little things. I'd like to perhaps explore fear a little bit more. Oh, no. <laughs> On my first day with Cindy, we began with Deal, a strategy from my book, The 4-Hour Workweek, to help her make the leap from freelance yoga instructor to full-time holistic entrepreneur. Entrepreneurship is a full contact sport. We're getting Sydney into the game and immediately forcing her to do things that make her uncomfortable. And we're using some unorthodox methods. So welcome to the House of Air. Oh, that's cool. The founders of the House of Air actually used the four hour work week as a guidebook when they were first building their business. So it's the perfect place for Cindy to practice confronting her fears. Today, we're gonna up the ante by asking her to do her very first backflip. I'm a little scared. <laughs> Let's get working on this backflip. Like I'm always it. scared of like landing on my neck or something. All right, let's go. I want to condition her so she realizes, number one, she can deal with fear. The worst case scenario, if something goes wrong, is not that bad. It's very manageable. You can recover. OK. I've never done this before. All right, so here, you can do it. I'm scared. I'm scared now. One, two, three. <laughs> One, two, three. <laughs> oh, keep it going, keep it going. She was 80% of the way there. She kept on grabbing the ropes. <laughs> <laughs> giving 80% is like giving 0%. It's just not enough to reach orbit. You have to reach escape velocity. And to do that, you have to commit. And I think that's one thing she's had a lot of trouble doing. That was a great pause. <laughs> I think you could totally do that. OK. That was go. so close. You got it. You're almost there. OK. Hi. Well done. Awesome. No rope either. And she eventually did it without grabbing the ropes. In a way, I think that that will transfer to the other things that we're doing. First backflip ever. That's a big deal. Which was harder, the 10% off coffee or the backflip? Backflip. Backflip? <laughs> <laughs> Cindy is really starting to grasp the critical importance of overcoming fears in order to reach her goals. Now, it's simply time for her to define exactly what those goals are. So I, I want to ask you a bit about what really, really gets you excited. I just visualize, I don't know, kids, people, family coming together and using yoga as a space of community gathering. But what's missing then? Like, why are we here? I want to make more money. <laughs> okay, now we're getting somewhere. There, there it is. Right. Definition involves defining your ideal lifestyle through quantification. So imagine your ideal retirement that maybe you're postponing for 10, 20, or more years. What do you have? What do you do? And how much does it cost on a monthly basis? This becomes your TMI, your target monthly income. What's more money? I mean, what, what, what would a solid amount be? If I could make just 5000 a month, I'd be fine. With 5 k you have an extra 2500 what do you do with that? I want to take my parents back to Thailand because they barely go on vacation. Like, I want to be able to take them back, and they don't have to worry about buying that plane ticket. Now we're clear about the amount Cindy needs to cover her monthly expenses, about $2,500, and how much she needs for liberation, which is between four dollars and $5,000 per month. But the question remains, how does she reach that goal? What sets her apart from every other yoga instructor and catapults her into the lucrative realm of the truly unique? What does the future look like? Like, if you're trying to drive somewhere, you need to know the destination. Right. Which idea, besides just being another boring-ass yoga teacher, <laughs> right? Like, doing... If you're going to do... I don't want to be a boring-ass yoga teacher. <laughs> that would suck, you know? It's not going to get me anywhere. It's time for Cindy to up her game, so I'm giving her a true stretch goal. I would like to propose that you host a disco yoga party slash class, at least 30 people. And they all have to pay. You got really quiet all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, like, shoot, I have two days. Couldn't yeah. start to think already. This will be the biggest class Cindy has ever taught. She stands to make more money than she ever has before. 
To help her on her way, I'm giving her a book that I consider critical for any product launch. So I think you'll find this very useful, and it might be a good idea to dig into this a little tonight. OK. The principles in this book are extremely actionable. They're all supported by case studies. It's a great short book. Tim and Noah definitely poked at me a lot, which I guess in a way is good. The real work comes tomorrow. OMG is all I got to say. Yesterday, Noah and I put Cindy on the clock. We gave her two days to organize a disco yoga class with at least 30 paying clients, her largest event ever. Cindy still hasn't figured out what she's charging, and she needs to be much more aggressive in pricing the service that she offers. I've held events before with hundreds or 1,000 plus people, mm -hmm. and I noticed something really interesting. When I did free events, less than half would show up. As soon as I started charging, attendance almost 100%. Right. When you pay for it, you value it more. Like, what's the most you've charged someone for a group class in the past? Ten bucks. For the time being, let's just make ten. Yeah. OK. OK. Now that we've set Cindy's price point, she has to find an effective marketing strategy. And that brings us to the second step in my four-part process for building any business, elimination. What would you normally do? Like, let's say we didn't give you 48 hours to come up with your largest event ever. What would be the normal process you'd go through? Um, probably would give myself maybe a couple weeks. Yeah. Because I'm afraid of time. I always have a hard time focusing on one thing. And then it's like I self, I self doubt myself. I start to question myself if I'm good enough. I guess the good news is you don't really have time to be afraid of time this week. Yeah, 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 exactly, right? <laughs> so. Today, we're going to figure out what's worked, what hasn't, so that we can eliminate as much as possible. Right. What we're going to do, which is quant-based marketing, is you're going to list out all the different ways that you can get 30 people, and how many people you think you'll sign up from that way. Keeping track of stuff is very, very important. You can actually focus on what has worked. Have you tried any particular ways to get customers? I've just been posting on Facebook, hey, I'm teaching at the studio. Yeah. OK. And of course, no one so, shows up. I mean, like, Of course. What do you mean? How often does that happen? Pretty often. Cindy needs to stop crossing her fingers with passive marketing strategies and try more direct methods. Telephone is very effective, but it's very uncomfortable. So you need a script. And Noah and I are going to help her write one. How would you approach Tim to come to your class? It's like, hey, Tim, there's a really great class I'm hosting tomorrow night. I would love for you if you can make it. Sounds super cool. God, I've, I've just got so much going on. I'll let you know if I can do it. Right? What's a common mistake is that we do passive communication. Um, can anyone come to my class? OK, no one came, fine. I didn't put myself out there. Yeah. Instead of the opposite of saying, hey, Tim, what are you up to tomorrow night? Not sure. What's going on? <laughs> then I can't pull the bullshit card. It kind of is passive in a way. Maybe I, have, I need to really be more upfront or direct. Hey, Tim, what are you up to tomorrow night? I haven't figured out. Since you don't have any solid plans tomorrow. I would not open with since you have nothing else going on, because it diminishes the value of the class. OK. I would say, awesome. I'm throwing my second ever disco yoga party. The last one was sell out. It would mean so much to me if you came. Can I count you in? Here's a link to the event. It will be $10, and it will include yoga, disco music, and dancing. Good. Cindy's all set with her script, so now it's time to put it to work. Hey, David. Hey, Tony, Erica. Hey, Casey. I'm throwing my second yoga dancing, disco party. It only costs 10 bucks. You want to come? Cindy seems like a different person. And as a result, she closed 11 people and found a venue. Amazing. Amazing. I've never really been pushed like that before. There's direct action now versus just sitting there wondering what I should be doing. I'm very curious to see how far she has come by tomorrow. Today's a pretty big day. Turning on my laptop, I noticed I had more ticket sales. My goal is 30. I'm pretty sure I'll get it tonight. I'm going to be working on that today. I'm having Cindy check in with me today at a location I thought would be particularly instructive for her. Here we are. <laughs> Creative Live is a startup founded by a friend of mine that offers world-class instruction from some of the best experts in the world for free. So you tune in live online. It streams for free. You could watch a two- or three-day course on photography, language learning, on anything. And then if you want to download it after the fact to have access to it later, then you pay. Look at this place. And this all started 
with one guy who liked taking pictures. Wow. That's it. I thought this was an important lesson for Cindy to see. So she stops thinking about $10 a person per class, one class at a time. All right, so I can barely contain myself. I want you to get me, get me caught up. Where are we? <laughs> I think we're a little over uh, 30 sales at the moment. Congratulations. Uh... <laughs> Aside from Creative Live, the point of the check-in was to check her status. What is working, what isn't. Let's look at some of the numbers, just quickly. So Facebook, you know. so you got four out of direct message. Yeah. Facebook event page, zero. What about phone calls? How many phone calls did you make? Seven. All right, so you made seven calls and you got 10 people. Yeah. That's fantastic. All right. After you've done your elimination, remove the things that are the trivial many as opposed to the critical few, automation is taking what remains and scale it. But let's say you decide that calls are the most effective way to get people to sign up. It is something that you can delegate to someone else. Right. So that removes you from yeah. the entire piece, right? Mm -hmm. If the phone's working really well, could she find a friend or two to recruit people, give them a 50% commission so that it's not her as the single bottleneck? Now you don't need to do that. Mm -hmm. You could be in Thailand with your family while this stuff is still happening. Cindy is still a long way from full automation, but I wanted to plant the seed so that at least she could visualize what her business might someday become. I got homework to do, got about, what, four more hours? I don't know, it's not much. The night of Cindy's yoga disco party has finally arrived. Cindy has worked her ass off to pull this event together in two days. Let's see if she can deliver. I was super nervous before because it's just like a new experience, new venue, new space, there's no equipment. But now that my friends are here, I feel a little more relaxed. I want you to set your intention for this evening. So let's take this moment in to breathe. At first, it was just like the other class we took with Cindy. But once we were warmed up, the music kicked in, and it was a different beast entirely. All right, inhale, raise the arms up. Clapping to the beauty music. Don't be shy. Woo! There you go. Within five minutes of starting the class, I knew it was going to go well, because she clearly put in a lot of effort. She'd memorized proper lines and segues. A fist pump, fist pump, fist pump with the right hand. Come down. Get low. Get low. Get low. <laughs> She did a great job, and people were really having a blast. Last night was awesome. I thought you did an amazing job. Yeah, really you. impressed. Yeah. It definitely was a growing week for me. It was exhausting, but I have more coffee and I'm just excited to get started. This week, Cindy successfully put the first two steps of deal into practice. Now it's time to give her an assignment designed to build on that and point her towards automation and eventually liberation. We defined your target monthly income and we also had this dream trip to Thailand with your family. If your goal is 4,000 for a month, you did 330 in 36 hours, which was fantastic. We're gonna be very, very generous, and we're gonna give you until next Friday to make $1,000. Okay. So if you do that, you can change your life fundamentally. Cindy could become a world-class entrepreneur if she so chooses. Right now, she teaches a class paid by the head. She has to be there. Later on, she could farm it out. She could start to delegate, start to automate. Then, well, as they say in the infomercials, you're making money in your sleep. But you have to take it step by step. You can't try to eat the elephant in one bite. I think one of the things that you know Tim talks about with the system is that what you're really looking for is what can you repeat and what is going to be predictable. Cindy's next challenge is to create a unique yoga experience with a repeatable revenue model that provides her with immediate cash flow at a minimum of $1,000. High five. High five. High five. Move. <laughs> Here in San Francisco, the tech startup community is very big, 
And I figured, hey, maybe I could bring disco yoga to the corporate world. So Tim and Noah challenged me to make $1,000 in one week, but I actually ended up getting $1,050. So it's definitely a good start. The adventure is just beginning for Cindy. This year, she'll be going to Thailand with her entire family. But more important, what about you? What are you going to do and where will you go this year?